In this video, we're determining the dependence of resistance on the area and length of a conductor. So in this top picture, I have a little section of a conductor and I'm trying to look at what's happening microscopically. There's a potential difference across this thing. I see that current is flowing to the right, but we know what that really means is electrons are flowing to the left. And these electrons are responding to the presence of an electric field through the conductor. That puts an average force on them to the left and they move to the left with a velocity that's called the drift velocity. And I'll post a derivation to the drift velocity formula real quick. Now resistance arises from collisions with atoms in the material. So these electrons are slamming into atoms and they get slowed down and then they get sped back up by the electric field and then they collide again and so on and so on. These collisions are what dissipates power in a resistor. And I'll post a link real quick to the video where I derive the power formula for resistors. And this energy loss is what results in the constant drift velocity of the electrons. If there was no energy loss here, the electrons would be speeding up and speeding up and speeding up as they went from low to high potential. So let's think about a couple changes we could make to this conductor, and then we'll figure out what effect these changes have on the resistance. But first, a reminder of Ohm's law. We can write Ohm's law as current is voltage over resistance. You may be more used to seeing that as V equals IR, which is just a simple algebraic manipulation of the equation. And then I'm going to think about what happens if I make my conductor wider. So I'm increasing the cross-sectional area, which we'd normally call A. Well, I have the same potential difference across the conductor. And having the same potential difference in the same length means the strength of the electric field in there is going to be the same. Remember, electric field could be measured in volts per meter. And that's staying the same in this picture. If the strength of the electric field is the same, it means the drift velocity or the average velocity of the electrons in this conductor should be the same. But with a fatter wire and the same electron velocity, that means I have more electrons per second passing through the wire. In other words, the current has just gone up. If I then look at Ohm's law and say, oh, the current just went up because of the changes that I made. Well, I didn't change V. What happened here is R changed. R must have gone down in order to increase the current. And we've obtained the first proportionality for the equation we're trying to derive here. The resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the wire. Next, we look at what happens if we take the original wire and just make it longer. Well, in this case, we're taking the same potential difference and spreading it out over a larger distance, but we know that electric field can be measured in volts per meter. We didn't change the volts, but we just made the length longer. So this decreases the electric field. That decreases the drift velocity of the electrons because they're responding to a smaller force. And now that these electrons are moving slower, they're carrying less charge per second through the conductor. Then I realized, looking at Ohm's law, that if the current went down, it means the resistance went up, and we obtain our second proportionality. We can put these two proportionalities into an equation, and there's a constant of proportionality in here. That constant of proportionality, given by the Greek letter rho, is called the resistivity of the material. And this is just a property of the material, telling you how bad of a conductor the material really is. The bigger the resistivity, the more the resistance. So a good conductor would have a very small resistivity. A bad conductor has a big one. Notice real quick the units of resistivity. If I want ohms to pop out of this new formula, resistivity better have ohms in it. And then that second term, length over area, that's a 1 over meters. So resistivity better have a meters in it to cancel that. So resistivity is measured in ohm meters. Finally, we'll wrap things up with an example. So in the example, we're told that nichrome has a resistivity of about 1.01 times 10 to the negative 6 ohm meters. And I want to know what length of 30 gauge nichrome wire, and of course the units we want are those millimeters for the diameter of the wire, is necessary to make a 5 ohm resistor. So we'll start with our new formula, R equals rho L over A. And what I'm trying to solve for here is length. So I multiply by A on both sides and divide by rho. And I get the length is R times A over rho. Now just a quick reminder here. We don't have to cut that diameter in half in order to compute the cross-sectional area. We can just change the area formula in terms of diameter. Our classic formula is pi R squared for the cross-sectional area. But R is half the diameter. And when I square that, that squares the 2 in the denominator, giving me a 1 fourth pi diameter squared. Going back to my length calculation, the resistance I want is 5 ohms. The cross-sectional area is 1 quarter times pi times the diameter squared. To get this in meters, I need to shift the decimal point three times. 0 0.000 
two, five, four, six squared. Then I plug in my resistivity in the denominator, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the negative 6 ohm meters. I can see the units of ohms are going to cancel. One factor of meters cancels from the squared meters in the numerator. And one survives, leaving me with meters for my final units, and that's a good thing because we're trying to find a length. When I run the numbers on this, I get 0.242 meters, just keeping three sig figs here. And that looks nicer in centimeters as 24.2 centimeters of nichrome wire. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.